Therefore, it is now time for members' statements. The member from Stormont Dundas, South Glengarry. Thank you, Speaker. Last Friday night, I attended the 2017 Glengarry Celtic Music Hall of Fame induction dinner, and I can reassure you that Celtic music and dance is still very alive and vibrant in Glengarry yeah. Council today, County today. A product of the Scottish and French cultures as they gathered as neighbours over the past 200 years. As a high school student, a night out often involved the two-step into the music of Sylvester McDonald and the Klansmen at the Bonnie Glen or the Brigadoons at Bob's Hotel in Dalhousie. <laughs> the night started with the piping in of this year's inductees, Daryl McLeod, Yuli McDonnell, Lloyd McQuaig and the Ranger family, all very active in the county's music scene over the past 100 years. After a terrific dinner, the crowd sat back and were entertained by numerous musicians and singers, including the Glengarry Fiddlers at Huey McDonnell, home from New in Nova Scotia, performing a medley of some of the 60 songs he had written, of many about the memories of growing up in Glengarry County. It was a wonderful night, and I want to thank President Isabel Clark and a volunteer team on a great and entertaining night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Since the member has a couple of seconds, I'll just let him know that he was mentioned in our speak with the Ontario Quebec delegation and Niagara on the Lake. Uh, uh, Mac Donnell was one of the first legislators 225 years ago. A uh, Mac Donnell was there. And he, he was so dedicated to his job, he got tied up, he tied himself up to a horse so that he could get there. And if you tie yourself up to a horse and get here, I'm quitting. Further member statements. The member from Hamilton East, Stony Creek. Thank you, Speaker. I can guarantee there was a Miller there somewhere. Uh, speaker, on Friday, May 26, 1967, the students at Delta Secondary School in East Hamilton buried a time capsule on the northeast lawn of the school, which is intended to be opened 50 years later. In 1967 was Can Canada's centennial year. The Hamilton Tiger Cats won the Great Cup. It was the last time the Toronto Maple Leafs won the Stanley Cup. Uh, human feet had not yet left their mark on the moon. A lot has changed, Speaker. Last Friday, May 26, 19, 2017, I had the pleasure of joining Delta Alumni Association and the Delta School Administration as they honoured those students' wishes. There were many friendly and familiar faces to be found in that auditorium. It was also a good fortune to look out into the crowd to many faces from the class of 67 themselves. Fifty years later to the day, the time capsule was opened to reveal a treasure trove from 1967. Despite some water damage over the decades, hundreds of items remained intact. There were photos, class lists, letters from politicians, and several letters and sketches from students who tried to predict what 2017 would look like. Congratulations and thank you to the students and staff of Delta past and present. I'd also like to add that in, in June, Sir Winston Churchill Secondary School in my riding is celebrating its 50th anniversary. Hamilton students of today are privileged to have so many links with Canada's centennial year. Thank you. The member from Northumberland, Quinty West. Well, thank you, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, last week I had the pleasure of visiting Cameco, a world leader in uranium production in Port Hope, a community in my riding. Today, I proudly stand to commend both Cameco and Bruce Power, who recently announced a long-term arrangement in support of Ontario Long-Term Energy Plan. The two companies extended their fuel supply arrangement for the next 10 years. Cameco will also provide reactor components for all six of Bruce Power major component replacement projects starting 2020. This agreement helps ensure Bruce Power continue to provide low-cost electricity to families and business through 2064, while providing long-term economic benefits to the Northumberland region. Speaker, the deal gives additional security for more than 700 people working a fuel service operation in Port Hope, Coburg, and Blind River, where their mining operation is. That's a huge contribution that will help, felt by thousands in Northumberland, Quinney West, and indeed across the province. Bruce Power continues to provide 30% of Ontario electricity at 30% below the average residential price. With, with agreements with partners such as Chemical, this means another 40 years of low-cost emission-free power to the province. This helps Ontario business stay competitive and help Ontario families build a, a better future to 2064 and beyond. Congratulations to both organizations, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Sarnia Lamb. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. 
It's my privilege to rise today in the legislature and officially recognize two very special anniversaries this year. This year, 2017, marks the 162nd anniversary of the Grand Lodge of Canada in the province of Ontario and the 300th anniversary of Freemasons, who developed a central governing body under the Grand Lodge of England in 1717. Central to the tenets of Freemasonry is a belief in brotherly love, relief, and truth, with charity to all mankind, no matter on an individual's race, nationality, sect, or condition. With more than 550 lodges and over 40,000 members in Ontario, the good works of Freemasonry can <clears throat> be seen in every corner of our province. On Saturday, June the 3rd, to celebrate Freemasonry's 300th year, the Masons of Ontario will be hosting open houses uh, celebrations in communities across this province. Mr. Speaker, please join with me in congratulating the membership of Freemasonry on both their 162nd anniversary of Freemasonry in Ontario and the 300th anniversary of the Grand Lodge of England. As they continue to take good men and make them better, may this great and time-honored fraternity continue from strength to strength until time and circumstance will be no more. So mote it be. A member from Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. Today, I want to pay tribute to an incredible man. His name is Jean Gagnon. He died on May 1, 2017, at the age of 90. Jean dedicated over 60 years of his life fighting for health and safety and compensation for his fellow centering plan workers and their family all victims of an industrial disease that was only recognized because of his persistence and his determination. Jean was a health and safety activist way before that position was recognized. Jean had no medical training and even less epidemiological training, but he saw what his co-worker was exposed to. He could recognize the cough that they all had. The Cinderin plan has been jam-packed with five machines where there really only was room for three, so there was no way to contain the nickel dust. Workers could not see one another if they were more than 20 feet apart because of the dust. The nickel dust was so toxic that some woman who never set foot in the Cinderin plan also got sick just by washing their husband's work clothes that were covered in that dust. The Cinderin plant is now demolished, and no one who ever worked there has survived. Jean, Jean got those sick workers the care that they needed and their family the, the compensation that they deserve so that these women don't live their remaining lives in poverty because they looked after their sick husband who died too young. For everything you've done, Jean, merci. Thank you. Thank you. Statement, the member from Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm happy to rise today as we mark the start of Sexual Assault Prevention Month. As a government, we recognize the devastating impact of sexual violence. We are committed to a society where survivors of sexual assault feel safe, coming forward, and supported. That's why our government introduced It's Never Okay, our $41 million action plan to stop sexual violence and harassment. We have launched a free, independent legal advice pilot program for survivors of sexual assault. We have increased funding to the 42 sexual assault centres across Ontario by $1.75 million for a total of $14.8 million per year, and we have passed legislation removing barriers for survivors of sexual assault to start a civil action or claim. With all that said, I believe that there is more that we can be doing in this province to ensure justice for survivors of sexual violence and harassment. That is why I introduced the Judicial Sexual Assault Education Act to ensure that judicial candidates have proper training on these issues before they are appointed to the bench. This training for judicial candidates would already complement the enhanced education and training for Crowns and Victim Service workers, which has already provided special training to 600 Crowns who received training in 2016 on conducting sexual violence prosecutions and improved data collection to help identify areas that require attention. Mr. Speaker, I know that there is always more that we can do to ensure justice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Further member statements from member from Niagara West Lambert. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The recent labour snapshot report released by the government in March shows that youth employment is headed in the wrong direction. From 2006 to 2015, employment for youth declined from 14.9 per cent to 13.5 per cent, yet another example of how life has become harder under the Liberals. Too many of my peers are caught in a vicious cycle of underemployment, unemployment and precarious work. They want more than jobs. They want careers and they want opportunity. Employers also need the next generation of skilled workers to succeed because there is currently a significant misalignment between the number of post-secondary graduates, uh, subject areas and employers' needs, threatening the future of both our youth and our economy. Ontario PC leader Patrick Brown and the Ontario PC caucus understand that investing in our youth now is at the centre of Ontario's future success. We need to ensure that our students have the best education possible and close the skills gap that it is estimated to cost Ontario's economy up to $24.3 billion in foregone GDP a year and $3.7 billion in provincial tax revenues. There is much that government can and should do to overcome this problem. We can bridge the skills gap by first bridging the information gap, collecting and sharing better labour market information to inform the decision-making process of students, educators and businesses will lead to better planning. When we invest in young minds, it's an investment in our future. Solving the skills mismatch is key to Ontario's resurgence as an economic powerhouse in Canada and across North America. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. It is my pleasure to rise as the MPP for Windsor West on behalf of my constituents, as well as on behalf of the member from Windsor Tecumseh and his constituents, to congratulate the 2017 Memorial Cup champions, the Windsor Spitfires. Speaker, uh, this past week we've seen uh, hockey teams come from all over to compete in the Memorial Cup, and although the Windsor Spitfires were seen as the underdogs, they really put up a strong fight in each game and proved that Windsor has spirit. Uh, in 2009, the Windsor Spitfires won the Memorial Cup, and then again in 2010, they were Memorial Cup winners. We had to wait a few years, um, but we saw this week, this weekend, um, that the Spitfires still have what it takes um, to play a good game, to bring their best game, even though they were the underdogs, and make our entire city Crowd. In fact, Speaker, last night I think we could say that the, the Windsor Spitfires scored their hat trick when they brought home their third Memorial Cup. And Speaker, some people in this House may not realize that there was, for a very short period of time, a Gretzky that played for the Windsor Spitfires. Now, it wasn't me, and they certainly wouldn't want it to be me, um, but I can tell you that I was there with them both at the games and then last night here in Toronto in spirit cheering them on. The crowds were electric. Uh, the pride in our community is great. And I want to thank everyone in our community who made it happen and congratulate the Windsor Spitfires on a well-played tournament. And the member is a huge fashion statement today, so thank you. Further member statements, the member from Scarborough Asia Court. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Today is a special day for the Armenian community. On May the 28th, 1918, the first Republic of Armenia declared independence, creating a new and independent Armenian state for the first time since Middle Ages. Celebrating the Declaration of Independence of the First Republic of Armenia is of great importance to Armenian communities here in Ontario and around the world. For many it represents an opportunity to celebrate the collective identity of Armenian people, as well as a chance to commemorate the courage and perseverance of Armenian leaders throughout their history who have fought for freedom, the right to self-government, and who deeply value democratic rules. The anniversary of the First Republic of Armenia's Independence Day also allow us an opportunity to reflect on the contributions of the Armenian Canadians in our province. Ontario has prospered because of the courage, strength and resilience of communities like the Armenians that have built up this province, Mr. Speaker. And I'm proud to represent Scarborough Asian Corps, a diverse riding with a thriving Armenian community. One of the great privileges I have as a member of Parliament, provincial Parliament, is representing members of the community and to celebrate their successes and also to advocate on their behalf. Speaker, I would like to thank the Armenian Canadian community here in Ontario for their contribution to this province, especially leading the way to bring Syrian refugees to Ontario. I want to wish them a great day as they celebrate the Declaration of Independence of the First Republic of Armenia. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. Therefore, it's time for reports by committees. The member from Oxford. 